Welcome back everyone. And in this video, I will be doing a taper fade, but only in the back. He wants to keep his waves nice and full. He's been woofing for a little while and he told me he doesn't want the taper on the sides, only in the back. So, say no more. And his hair looks like this. Like I said, he's been woofing and I, I picked his hair out. We're gonna take him down to a one and a half combing through his hair. I picked it out and now I'm just combing it in the direction I'm going to cut it. So I have my Andy Supras and I'll take his hair down with a one and a half blade. Following his pattern. And I always stress you want to take your time when you're doing this. And I always remember this video is sped up so it looks like I'm moving extremely fast. I'm actually going at a nice moderate pace and I'm following the growth, direct, the growth direction of his wave pattern. I asked him if he wanted his swirl to be bigger or guard higher and he said no, he wanted it all to be the same length, one and a half. One thing I don't show you guys on my videos, uh, before I start a haircut, even if I'm cutting the same client I've been cutting for years, I still do a client consultation just in case they want to do something different. I never, or you should never want to assume that your client wants to keep it the same. I always ask them, hey, uh, how do you like me to style and cut your hair today? And they'll let you know. Because I've cut his hair before, and I just didn't film it and I did taper fade his sides out. So I just asked him today, hey, like I, I do all my clients, how you want me to cut and style it? And he said, I want to taper, but only in the back. And I also asked him, do they want me to use metal guards or plastic guards? Because some people have a preference. The metal guards cut true to the size and they get a more, to me, they give a more cleaner cut. It takes out all the guesswork. I'm going to create my first guideline, the ball guideline. I'll be using my Babyliss Pro FX trimmers. These are the silver ones. I do have the uh, black uh, graphite blade attached to it. These are not zero gap. I thought about zero gap in these. And when I looked at them, when I opened them out the box, they looked pretty close. But when I tried to give someone a sharp edge up, they just wasn't zero gap. And I like them like that. They're cool for kids or people with sensitive skin, so I just kept them like that. Now I just switched to my Babyliss uh, Gold Adjustable Clippers. I have the lever all the way open. These are zero gap. I zero gap these along with the uh, matching trimmers. Just attach the number one guard. I have the lever all the way open. Just going up the inch. Okay, now switch to my highest guard I'll be using on him will be the number two and the guard is open. I'm sorry, the lever is open. So what, what I'm doing with this one, even though I took his hair down with a one and a half guard or blade, this number two against the grain fades right into that one and a half. Once you understand your guards and blades, it makes life a whole lot easier. So really I'm debulking and I'm trying my best to keep his profile of his waves in the back. So I'll start with it open and then I will close it. 
And right now I'm going against the grain and then I'll turn the clipper over and I'll go with the grain. And I'll do this throughout my whole guard rotation all the way back down to the adjustables all the way open. At that point, it should be a nice win. Like I said, I just close the lever. As you can see, I'm still going against the grain. Just be bulky. It may look like I'm using a full blade. I'm only using the corner. Now, any second now, I'm going to turn this over and start going with the grain. And that's just to lay the hair down and just give me an idea of how much more work I have to do as far as detailing. Because I like to stretch my, my blends and transitions out. I don't really like to do tight blends and tight transitions. It really just depends on the person's uh, hair texture or the particular cut that they, they want me to do, whether I make it real tight and, co and compressed. But for the most part, if someone has more hair or they ha it's a larger space, I like to stretch it out. And I just have, I put attached my one and a half or 1.5 guard. This is also the Babyliss guard I'm using. And the lever is all the way open. And I'm just going right underneath the number two. Each time you do this, when you switch your guards, just make sure that you're going underneath the previous section that you just did. That way you won't make the mistake of raising up your blend and raising up your fade. Now I just close the one and a half guard. And again, I'm gonna go a little bit against the grain. Then I'm gonna turn the clipper over and I'm gonna try to lay the hair down. And I'll start going with the grain. As you can see, I'm stretching. Stretching the skin and just debulking. Alright, going with the grain. And I will do this all the way until I'm finished using my guards. Now I have the number one guard attached. And again, I'm using the corners. When I'm going when I'm blending going to my right. I'm using the right corner, vice versa. If I'm blending going to my left, as you just saw, I'm using my left corner. And the lever is all the way open. And I'm going lower and lower each time down to the nape of his neck. So now I close the lever. I'm just doing the same thing, still debulking. Using the corner like a thinning shear and I'm going lower and lower. Now this is the .5 or the half bar, depending on what setup you're using. And I will start like always with my lever open. I'll make a couple passes to the left and to the right. And then I'll start closing the lever. And I'll make a couple passes. And then I'm gonna turn it over, go with the grain. And then I'm gonna go no guard. Now some people tend to skip using this guard. And you know, it's just everybody has a different barber's eye. You may not need to use this guard. There's nothing wrong with skipping this guard. You don't have to go through these. I just want to go through all the guard sets just so I can show someone that's new to cutting hair that you want to follow you. You know, lay down you a few little steps easy to follow, and then you can always go in and make adjustments. Okay, no guard. Now I have the lever all the way open. Now just place this side in the middle. Notice how lower I am now. Um, how far underneath this occipital bone I am. And now I closed it. All 
right now I'm just prepping his his line for the edge up. I went all around with holding spray. This is a maximum hold. So it'll just pretty much keep all this hair nice and stiff. Now as far as the edge up goes, I had to switch to my hitters. My my uh, Babyliss, uh Pro FX trimmers, the gold ones. These are zero gap. Sorry about my arm being in the way, but you still can see the profile of his edge up. I'm working on his curve. Using a corner going around his ear. Try, you know, when you do this, try not to make that line too high over the person's ear. Most people don't like that. There's a rare occasion where some people will tell you to take it up high, but if they don't tell you to do that, please don't do that. Now I'm just doing a little dry shave. The key to doing this is try to follow the growth pattern of the facial hair to keep your client from bumping up. Now I'm just gonna start in the center using his nose and his eyebrows and then I will connect the line to the left and to the right. And that's how I make my top line across the edge of, I mean, across the forehead. And I'm just lightly tapping because again, these are zero gap. I've been told I have a heavy hand, so I try to apply light pressure when I'm using these. They are very sharp. And I've probably stated in almost every video since I've been using these. These are my new favorite trimmers. Just touching up his mustache. We're gonna leave it this lint. He just wanted me to line it up. Just take your time as you're going around the person's mouth and their nose. You don't want to cut and nick them. I noticed some hair sticking up, so I'm just making some minor detail adjustments. A little detailing. Have it, have the uh, lever all the way open. As you can see the taper. Now that line that you see on the, by the nape of his uh, neck, that's for his do-rag. He does wear a do-rag to keep his waves and hair down. And I'm sorry, I do have the number one guard attached when I was going around his, his hair. And I will be applying enhancements in this video. I'll be using the Topic hair, fire, hair building fibers. Just for the front, we're still gonna keep it salt and pepper. And the goal when using enhancements is for it to look natural as possible. At least that's my goal. I don't want it to look like it's been enhanced. So I only do maybe a few sprays, no more than three in a particular section. And what we were laughing about, he just told me to make sure he doesn't look like he has a painted on edge up. And I told him, trust me, you won't even notice it. Follow it up with a razor. Now, as a bonus, I'm gonna put some wave setting lotion on him just to make his wave pop out a little more. So 
what I didn't show, I used some water. I just saturated his hair some, and then I applied this wave setting lotion to him. And I'm just lightly brushing it in to his waves. He's gonna put his do-rag on. And he'll be ready for the night. Or wherever else he's going to do. I hope everyone learned something from this video. Please continue to support me. I appreciate the subscriber, subscriber count going up. Uh, this is Junior. Thank you again. Thank you again for watching my video. Please like, share, and tell someone else to subscribe to the channel. And I will be back with some more videos. sheer work all right again this is junior thanks again for watching the video hope you enjoy the rest of your day or just the weekend enjoy your weekend peace